that we started addressing a new series of teachings, and I admonished you, please, stay in church through the series. Amen? So you can get the full package of what God is teaching us through this series. And we call that series, Living Like Jesus. Let's all say, Living Like Jesus. I will live like Jesus. So this is uh, part two, if you want to call it, part two of living like Jesus. And we read a scripture that week that I want to read again just to start. Let's do a little bit of a recap before we build on that. Romans chapter 8, verse uh, 29 through 31. Romans chapter 8, verses 29 through 31. And I read from the New Living Translation of the Bible. It says this, for God knew his people in advance and he chose them to become like his son so that his son will become the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. Amen. So there are many things going on in this scripture here. It says God knew you ahead of time. Before you became a believer, before you became a Christian, God knew you a long time. In fact, he even knew you before you got formed in your mother's womb. And then he chose you to become like Jesus. And then he said that after he has chosen you, he also called you to come to him. And after calling you to come to him, he gave you a right standing with him. He qualified you. He sanctified you. He made you righteous. So the, the righteousness that we have, when we say we're righteous, we're not boasting about our own righteousness. We are talking about the borrowed righteousness that God put on us. Amen. That's why we can call ourselves. That's why sometimes you say, raise holy hands. Amen. <laughs> Raise holy hands. The holiness is God's holiness that he put on us. Amen. And then after doing that, he also, the last thing he did here was, he gave you his glory. He has bestowed his glory on you. Hallelujah. So wherever you go, if Jesus is respected there, you will be respected there. Amen. If, if Jesus looks good in a place, when you enter that place, you begin to look good. That's when God gives you his glory. Anyway, now, so a few things that we learned from that scripture last week was that every Christian has been appointed to become like Jesus. We all have one appointment. It's very, it's common to all of us. It's common to the other church. It's common to all believers. The appointment is you must become like Jesus. And in reality, if we don't become like Jesus, then our Christianity is in vain. It, I mean, we are wasting our time. If we don't become like Jesus, then we are wasting our time. So the one thing we want to resolve to do throughout our Christian journeys is to become like Jesus. So down the line, maybe from next week, last week I promised that I'll do that this week, but I'll push it to next week. We will start to study how Jesus lived. How did he live? Because if we're going to be like him, imitate him, then we must know how he lived his life so we can imitate the right person. And then we said, we read from Galatians chapter 20 verse 22, that Apostle Paul said, it is no longer I who live. So when you become a Christian, it is no longer, your life is no longer your, your life, if I should put it that way. Okay? Your life is no longer your life. You got it, right? In fact, I posted a, a, um, 
I don't know what figure, is, figure of speech is that when I say your life is students, English scholars. I, I posted something on Facebook, I think it was last week. It said, the problem is not the problem. The way you think about the problem is the problem. <laughs> okay? The problem is not. So your life, when you become a Christian, your life is no longer your life. It's now God's life. It's now Jesus living his life through you. So you become a borrowed vessel through which Jesus is living his life. Isn't it beautiful? You know how Jesus borrowed the donkey and rode on it? So now the, bon the donkey was now being celebrated. A donkey that men were celebrating. So when Jesus borrows your vessel to live his life through you, I tell you, this, it doesn't get better than that. Amen. It, it doesn't get better than that. You now become celebrated. You now, be carry, the, you now carry the glory of Christ. Now, let's go on. And we say when you become more like Jesus, God begins to look. Anytime God looks at you, he's looking at Jesus. He's no longer looking at Philip or whoever you, your name was. God is no longer looking at, like, uh, at that person. He's looking at Jesus through you. And the devil, that's the part that I really like. The devil, when the devil also sees you, henceforth, he's no longer seeing that young that person who used to struggle he's no longer seeing that person he used to torment he is now seeing jesus in you amen when the devil sees you he sees jesus and so he you know he can't stand jesus the devil can't stand jesus he can't even stand the name of jesus and so when the devil sees you you are a no go zone to the enemy you are like untouchable to the devil. Amen? You are untouchable. You, are, you, you become, I mean, uh, he, the devil is allergic to you. How, how about that? <laughs> okay. Now, I want us to just build on that. We, there's one thing we took away last week, which was at the end. We began to ans answer the question, how do we become like Christ? How do we do this thing? Because if we can just get this one thing, I think we will be fine, right? So I believe your heart is yearning. I believe that your heart is yearning. Your heart is boiling. How do I become like Christ? Until we get there, this series and our whole Christian journeys will be in vain. Whose heart is boiling? <laughs> Dear. Amen. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. I, I want us to get to this place where we are yearning, our hearts are boiling. We are like, I want to know, I just want to become like you. There's a song that says, I want to be more like you. Jesus, I want to be more like you. Jesus, I want to be a vessel you work through. I want to be more like you. Let's sing it again. I want to be more like you. Jesus, I want to be more like you. Jesus, I want to be a vessel you work through. I want to be more like you. Are we all there on the same page? Do we want to become more like him? Amen. All right. So the first thing we talked about last week, how to become more like Christ, was the, um, it is God who is going to make us. There's a scripture we read um, don't have it here with me, but it's God. It is God who is going to make us. Anything that we want to become, it's God who is going to make us. So, um, and I make that illustration of a potter and, um, and a clay, right? We are the clay and he's the potter. So what does the clay need to do? If we know God is the one that's going to make us more like Christ, then we need to just make ourselves available. 
just make yourself available. It doesn't get easier than that. We just want to make ourselves available. You just want to surrender your life. Be totally surrendered unto the Lord. Somebody say, totally surrendered. And I wrote here, the clay must be malleable, breakable, um, and shapeable. Amen. Malleable, breakable. Are you breakable? <laughs> are you breakable? Or are you entrenched in your old ways? You know, that's how we fall like that. We hide behind being principled. We claim we are principled. And on the basis of that, we are difficult for God to deal with. That God is trying to make us go this way. But because our parenting or our culture or what we were taught in school says this is the way to go. God is struggling to bend us. And we are not bendable. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's not a laughing matter, but, you know, it, we, so we, we want to be the clay, the best kind of clay is clay that is totally surrendered, fully available. That Lord, do with me as you please. One man of God said he doesn't even make plans for the day. I think that's a little extreme. He wakes up in the morning and says, Lord, what will you have me do? <laughs> I think that's hardcore. Amen. <laughs> God, what will you have me do? That means if God says don't go to work, you don't go to work. But uh, I, I'm not advocating for that. Don't try it at home, please. <laughs> Amen. We, we, but we want to be soft. We want to be, you know, soft, humble, workable, malleable, breakable. Amen. Pulverable. Is any word like that? That God can pour the clay. The porter sometimes have to break the, the clay into powder. And then pour water and all that. So pulverable, you can ma be made into powder. I pray that God will bring us there. That God will bring us there. And um, tell your neighbor, loosen up, loosen up, loosen up. <laughs> Lo loosen up, amen. Yeah, we want to loosen up before the Lord. Now, we want to continue answering that question. So th that was just one way that we can become more like Christ. That's to become what? Totally surrendered to the Lord so God can work on us. Totally surrendered. So for some of us, by the time God is done with us, our language would change. Our language would change. Our, our thought process will change. Our decision making will change. Amen. The things we like, we will not like them again. Right? Yeah. Yeah. With the things we like, we will not like them anymore. You will lose appetite in some things. Oh my, hallelujah. I pray God will bring us there. We will lose appetite. The things I used to do, I do them no more. The place I used to go, I go there no more. Help me out. It's been a while. <laughs> I, I go there no more. It's a great day since I met, was born, right? Okay. Amen. Sunday school. Come on. Who, who went to Sunday school here? All right. Uh, I thank God. Thank God for today. Let, let's add to that, okay? How do we become more like Christ? Um, I want us to read Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 12. Verses 1 and 2. This is part 2 of living like Jesus. And I'm going to read from the New Living Translation again. I go between New Living Translation and the New King James Version. Therefore, since we are surrendered, su surrounded, I'm sorry, by a, such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight. Somebody says, strip off every weight. That slows us down. Espe yeah, and I continue. Especially the sin that so easily trips us up. 
and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy. I want somebody to find it in the New, uh, New King James and read that to us as well. New King James Version, Hebrews chapter 12, 1 to 2. And I continue, okay? We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Amen. So very powerful scripture. Who, who has it in the New King James? Who, who has that scripture, Hebrews? Please um, read that to us if you don't mind. One and two, I don't know. Okay. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the altar and the finisher of our faith, for who the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down in the right hand side of the throne of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Lay aside every weight. Let's all say lay aside every weight. There are two things in that scripture that I would like us to note when it comes to our, our desire, our effort, our journey to becoming more like Christ. Two things. The first one is that, uh, you know, the scripture is saying that we have so many witnesses watching us. We are on stage. Amen. That's what that scripture is saying. We are on stage. You are, when you think you are in, a, in your privacy, there is no privacy in the Christian life. When you think it's just you in your closet that nobody is watching, people are watching. Careful now, amen. Since that we have such a large crowd of witnesses that are watching us, because of that, we need to do two things. One, lay aside every weight. And I was asking myself, what is a weight? What is a weight? When it comes to a race, the way, a weight is the things that weigh you down. The things that slow you down from running as fast as possible. So the things that will um, slow down your progress, your speed, your pace of becoming like Christ, those are weights. In, the, in, the, in, an, in athletics, I don't think any... You, have you seen anybody dressed like this to come and run a 100 meter sprint? No. They are <laughs> that person is not about to even get, get a, 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 a medal. They are not about to win an award. Because they are going to be weighed down by the things that they are wearing. And they wear the barest minimum. These days they are even overdoing it. <laughs> they wear the barest minimum. And I've seen, I've, I told you guys about this, when a footballer was playing so well and the opponents wanted to distract him and they came up with some concocted sto contorted story of um, how he was not wearing an underwear. They said, oh, number nine is not wearing an underwear. They made it into a song and they started singing very loud just to distract him from what he was doing. That is a weight. Amen. And you know what this number nine guy did? He actually stopped playing and pulled down his pants for them to see his underwear <laughs> to prove to them that he was wearing an underwear. I don't think a professional would do that. <laughs> Amen. Now, so the thing, distractions, things on the sidelines that are pulling us. There are some relationships that can be a weight. 
there are some relationships that can be a way. Jesus said that if your right hand makes you uh, sin, you should cut it out. <laughs> wow, that's extreme. But then that's Jesus Christ for us. He said, don't allow anything to stand in your way of becoming like Christ. Don't allow anything. So if there's a boyfriend, a girlfriend, amen, that is weighing, is pulling you back in your Christian journey, what do we do with that kind of relationship? Lay aside every weight. Lay aside every weight. Lay aside. You say, Pastor, but he gives me money. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lay aside every weight. It can be a place that you go to regularly. It can be a, a show, a TV show that you watch regularly. That can be a weight. A TV show that every time you watch that TV show, it's like you've taken three steps back in your Christ-likeness journey. Because it fills you with so much carnality or fills you with so much you know, worldliness that you, you, your Christian journey has just been delayed. So, these things are the things that Jesus, the word of God is saying, the apostle Paul is saying, we need to what? Lay them aside. The other thing from that scripture that we have seen is what? Keep your eyes looking unto Jesus. Say looking unto, somebody say looking unto Jesus. It means keep your eyes fixed on Jesus Christ. When you wake up in the morning, focus on the Lord. When you hit the road and you get to work, think about Jesus, the whole journey. Amen? When, when, when you are working in the middle of your, or you are in class, students, think about Jesus Christ. Think about when, you, when troubles come and challenges show up, we think about the Lord. We keep our eyes on him. That is looking unto Jesus and another way of describing it is the, the way that he ran, we want to run the same way. Looking unto Jesus, the, the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus is our standard. Jesus is the prototype, the, the first model, the first model that Jesus, God made before he started making the others was Jesus Christ. And so he wants us to be molded in that shape, the shape of Jesus Christ. Amen. He's our prototype. He's our reference point. He's our measuring stick. For your information, your next, the next door neighbor is not your measuring stick. Say, Pastor, but I, I sing better than this guy next to me. Yeah, thank you, but that, he's not your measuring stick. Amen. He's not the standard. Jesus is our standard. I like this. This place is very lively today. Please don't be. Don't feel like you are making too much noise. Okay, just stay with us. It's a lively service. Amen. I love. I love the the life. The the, the life in this place. Now, so um, looking. Somebody say, I will look unto Jesus. I will fix my eyes on Him. I will fix my gaze on Him. I will use him as my standard. There are so many people these days that are, we are looking everywhere for, to fit in. We are trying to fit in in many different places. We are fitting into social media, right? We want to play ball. We don't want to look too odd, right? And for adolescents, the teenagers among us, there is a strong temptation to fit in and be cool. Isn't it? You just want to look cool. You also want to look modern, fashionable, that you are not, you know, um, left behind. But then the, that temptation can be evil. It can bring us into well, all kinds of worldliness and destruction. The crowd is not always right, but Jesus is right. Amen. The crowd is not always, Jesus will lead you to a place of life, a place of glory, a place where you will please God, and then all the other things will follow. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all the other things will follow. Now, 
the things that you've been pursuing will come after you become like Christ. The, the, the wonderful marriage follows. Okay, the prosperity follows. The healing follows. The fulfillment follows. All of them are embedded in this package of Jesus. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Now we understand when our mothers and our whatever we're saying that oh, when you have Jesus, then you have everything. When you have Jesus, you have everything. It's he, um, he's a package of all that we've been yearning for. Hallelujah. So we want to fix our, our focus on the Lord. I think we've talked about three things, right? The first thing was what? Um, we want to be totally surrendered. Somebody say totally surrendered. Second, we want to lay aside every weight. Say, lay, I will lay aside every weight. So if, if somebody doesn't receive a call from you tomorrow, that person should not be surprised, right? That means that you have been a weight on that person. <laughs> anyway, but then, and the third one was what? To look, look unto Jesus. Look unto Jesus. Fix your gaze on him. And I, I actually teach this sometimes even in, when in my therapy sessions when I do psychotherapy and I'm teaching about depression and anxiety. One of the sure ways for depression and anxiety to fizzle out of your life is when you think about Jesus Christ. Because you think about Jesus, you think about the victory he won for you. You think about, you know, all the pain, the stripes that were, by, your, by his stripes we are healed. Amen? You, 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 it symbolizes the Jesus on the cross, symbolizes so many things. So many things for the believer. Amen. I pray that God will cause that picture of Jesus Christ on the cross to be fixated on your mind. So that when darkness comes in, the light of Christ will drive it out of your life. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Let's read another scripture and um, we will be. It's a long one, but we'll see how much we can glean from it before we leave. Uh, Colossians. If you really want to be Christ-like, this is one scripture you should read over and over. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 15. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 15. I'm going to read from the New King James. And please uh, travel with me as we go through, okay? It says, if then, you were raised with Christ. Seek those things which are above. Where Christ is. Sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind. We have found it again, right? The other one says, looking unto Jesus. This one says, set your mind on things above. Not on things here on earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Then Christ who is our life, when Christ, I'm sorry, when Christ who is our life appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. That was verse 4. Let's go to verse 5. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passions, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now, somebody say, but now. So it talked about all the things that we used to represent when we were unbelievers. It says, but now. So that means the story is changing. You yourselves are put off, are to put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language 
out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Verse 11, we are almost there. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Verse 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on. So we, along the line, we saw a put off. Now we are encountering a putting on. Um, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another. And forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body and be thankful. Amen. It was long, but it's meaty. It has a lot in it. And the two things that you will pick from that long phrase, that long passage, is there are, when we want to become like Christ, so we've talked about what? Three things already. This is the fourth one. If you are making notes, there are some, there is going to be a change of clothing. A changing of clothing. That has to happen. Some clothes need to come off of us. And some new clothes need to be worn. Um, two illustrations here. I understand that in the early, in the first century church, first century church, when somebody is coming to be baptized, they, and I think we still do it today, just that we don't do it with the same significance. They, they wear a, a set of clothes, and then they carry a second set of clothes with them. So when the person is going to go in the water, they will remove, you know, the, the old clothing. And then when they are baptized, they get in the water and come out and they dry themselves, they put on the new set of clothes. That's the kind of thing. They, they were trying to illustrate. So that the old, they were trying to illustrate this scripture. So the old clothing represents what? Their old life. The old clothing was to represent your old life. The way you used to live. The places you used to go. The way you used to talk. The things you used to enjoy. And by coming to Christ, what we are doing is taking off our old clothing. And then we put on, after Jesus has, you know, baptized us, we are now born again. We, are, we put on new clothing, new set of clothing. And, but then we, have, we still have Christians in the church who haven't done that change of clothes as yet. Amen. But then God is giving us opportunities every day. Every time we hear the word of God, every time we, we read the scriptures, it's a brand new opportunity for us to do that change of clothes. Amen. I think that is a good place to round up today. Amen. But we don't want to round up. We don't want to live here until we do the change of clothes. And so you might want to stand with me. Stand with me. And let's do that change of clothing today. There are some things we need to put off. The apostle went ahead and listed a long, you know, he listed a number of things that we need to put off. And then some things that we need to put on. But we can't go into all of that. But we want to just ask the Lord. Lord, I pray that you will help me. Right now, as I'm standing here, I am uh, literally, figuratively removing some old clothing, some character traits, some character traits that don't look like Christ. 
I want to put them away. I, I'm remov literally removing them right now. And I pray somebody just begin to go through that prayer with the Lord. Just pray that prayer with the Lord and say, Lord, I, by faith, I am removing my old clothing. By faith, I am removing my old clothing. The clothing that looked like the world. The clothing that looked like my friends. The clothing that made me look like the world. The people of the world. The people that I grew up among. The lifestyle. That did not look like you. I am taking it off right now. I'm taking it off. And I pray, Lord, I, at, the, at the end of this day, Lord, may you clothe me anew. May you change my garment, Lord. Change my garment. Make me a new person. May I begin to look like Christ. May I begin talk like Christ. After today, may I begin to think like Christ. Evaluate like Christ, Lord. Do this work in my life today by the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody travail unto the Lord. Travail unto the Lord. Travail unto the Lord. Travail unto the Lord in prayer. Travail unto the Lord. Travail unto the Lord. Pray. Now, Lord, I want a change of clothes today. I want a change of clothes today. There are some things that I enjoy that are not like uh, approvable by you. There are some things that I enjoy to do and you don't approve of those things. I am taking them off. I am taking them off. I am taking them off by faith. By faith, I am taking them off, Lord. And I am putting on a new garment. The garment of Christ. The garment of Christ. The garment of Christ. The garment of Christ. There is love. There is humility. I'm putting on humility. I'm putting on, Lord, I, faithfulness. I am putting on the garment of Christ, holiness. I am putting on holiness today. I want to walk out of this place with the Jesus garment. I want to walk out of this place with the Jesus garment. Right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And if there's anyone that who, who wants to start a brand new journey with the Lord, maybe you've never accepted Jesus Christ into your, Lord, your life as your master, as your Lord, we want to pray for you. This journey is fulfilling. This journey makes all the difference in your life. It's the best decision you can ever make. And I want to pray for you right now. If you want to accept Jesus, you want to become a Christian, a God-fearing Christian, so your life will be turned around. Let's all pray together with that person who wants to accept Jesus into your life. Beloved, pray after me. Say, Father God, I thank you for your word. And I thank you for opportunity. I have lived my life in a way that does not please you. I have all been my own master. I have been my own master. But today, I want you to become my master. I believe in Jesus Christ. Your only son, who you sent to come and die for me. And I accept him into my life as my Lord and my Savior. Not to only sit on the side, but to sit on my throne. Sit on the throne in my life and begin to dictate what I do and what I don't do. Come, Lord Jesus. Enter my heart. Make me a new person. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Wash me with your blood. Make me your child. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. And please take your seats. Please take your seats. Amen. Wow. I believe that we are beginning to move up the scale, right? Today I didn't show my scale. The Christ-likeness scale. Right? Last week I showed a scale, right? Of where on one extreme there is worldliness. Then there are steps along the scale until Christ-likeness. 
I think today God has just moved us one notch towards Christ likeness. And I pray he will bring us along. Amen. Um, we have some birthdays in the house. But uh, I think we are going to take our offering first and then we'll celebrate our birthdays. Amen. All right. So let's take our offerings in this church. Uh, Brother Isaac, do you want to come and help me? And then after that, you remain here. <laughs> the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What we tell pastor, pastor, God bless you. God we bless you. God. Amen. God. Uh, I always say that God has a special word for us any time we come here. There, there's never been a time that a God's word is out of date and out of place. Amen. I would like to read something from the book of second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 11, sorry, verse 7. I read, just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness and in your love for us, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. Amen. Just as we, we, we are on this journey to, to live a Christ-like life, we should also have the mindset to excel in our art of giving. In the grace, the Bible refers it to us as the grace of giving. Amen. So at this point, we're going to go into a very important part of our worship. Very, very important part of our worship. It completes it to give to the work of God. Amen. As a church, we are a, a, a tight believing church. We believe that at least 10% of whatever God blesses you with belongs to him. So, bring it back to his house. Amen. We have ways of giving. They are displayed on the board. If you want to give electronically, you can use your smartphone. And then uh, you can use either Zelle or text to give. Or give to the impactchapel.give. They are all there. If you want to use the traditional ways of giving to the envelopes on the chairs, Please make sure that you inscribe your name at the back of the envelope. We will use it to prepare a contribution statement for you at the end of the year. Amen. Shall we pray as we give our offering? Father God, we thank you. We give you glory. We bless your holy name. We say of a truth you are God. Spirit of the living God, in obedience to your word, we are to give our substances to the furtherance of your work, O oh God. We pray that you bless every pocket. You bless every bank account. Bless every wallet that avails itself to this grace of giving. And we even pray that those who are not able to give today, next time when we gather here, Father God, we give them and ensure that they also partake in this. Amen. 